So we'll talk about uh, two major sisters of the ruminant. They are Monigia expansa and Monigia venedini. This parasite, that is Monigia expansa, also known as sheep tapeworm, because this parasite mostly found in sheep, but can also be found in goat, cattle, and different other ruminant species. Monigia venedini, these are mostly uh, found in cattle, but can also be found in other ruminants. These two parasites, commonly known as double pod ruminant tapeworm. So why they are called so? You will come to know the reason in a minute when we will discuss about the morphological features of these two parasites. And these parasites are also considered one of the largest tapeworms of ruminant species. This parasite is responsible for causing one of the important uh, tapeworm infestation in animal, uh, particularly in ruminant, is called monogeosis. Morphological features of the genus Monegia or Monegia species. First, we're gonna talk about the size of this parasite. So this is a very big parasite, ranges four to eight meters in length, and their breadth is also very high around 1.6 to 2.6 centimeter. What about their body parts? So if you can remember uh, the morphology of a cystors, we know that the body's, body of a cystors is divided into three portions. The first one is head and the neck and rest of the portion is called the proglotid. So uh, for most of the cystors, the shape of the scolex is cone shaped and at the top of this cone there may be rostellum or without rostellum but in case of this parasite that is monigia parasite the shape of this collex is almost rounded and there are four prominent sacar there is no rostellum and in the inside the sacar even there is no hooks therefore they are called unarmed uh, so the shape of the mature proglotid, the shape of the mature proglotid is almost rectangular and it is broader than long and you can, uh, if you look closely look at this picture, you can see one set of genital organ located here and another set of genital organ located here. So two sets of genital organ located in each of the mature proglotid. And as there is two set of genital organ, there should be two genital opening. So one is here and another one is here. Therefore, this parasite is also known as double pored uh, tapeworm. What about the serous cord? So serous cord is the part of male genital organs that is located within the serous sac. And this serous cord morphologically different to the serous cord of other cystoid species, and this will possess minute spine on its surface. And the next one is you can see there is a black structure uh, and another structure, flower like structure. So, black structure is called the vitelline gland, and the flower like structure is called the ovary. Due to their uh, seating fashion or due to their th this sort of appearance one may assume that uh, two rings are located or two rings are seats in each of the proglotid and the next important feature is the interproglotidal gland this is present in both monigia expansa and monigia venideni so one can easily differentiate uh, morphologically differentiate which one is which species based on this interproglotidal gland. So in case of the Monigy expansa, this interproglotidal gland, you can see minute doors are here. So interproglotidal gland distributed full breadth of the proglotid. But in case of the Monigy venideni, it is more compact and located in the middle of the proglotid. So this is the summary slides, what I have discussed already. 
So size of this parasite, this parasite is very big one, four to six meters long, and their breadth is also higher. But in case of the Monigia expansa, it is around 1.6 centimeter. And in case of the Monigia venedeni, it is around 2.6 centimeter. And the shape, uh, it is almost rounded or quadrangular. There are four prominent sacar. And if you think about the uh, shape of the proglotid, they're almost rectangular and broader than long. There is presence of two sets of genital organs, including two genital openings located or opens marginally. Therefore, they are also known as double pored tapeworms. So this is very important in your vivagosy. Uh, in it, a uh, teacher may ask you, tell me some of the parasites uh, which have two genital openings. So we have already talked about the interproglotidal gland in case of the monigia. This is extended to the full breadth of the body. And in case of the monigia venedeni, it is confined and mostly located in the middle of the proglotid. So it is, it is mostly located here. And there are also presence of numerous testes distributed in the central medullary field. And we have already talked about the serous cord. There is presence of minute spine. So serous cord is here, serous cord is here. And due to the um, ovary and the compact vitelline gland, they assume like a ring on each side of the proglotid. So ring-like appearance, it is due to the presence of ovary and the compact vitelline gland. So this is the life cycle of Monigia species. Whenever you start describing any life cycle, you should talk about the type of life cycle, whether it is direct or indirect life cycle. Then talk about the final host and intermediate host involved in the life cycle of that parasite. Don't forget to mention about the infective stages. And finally, talk about the time required for the completion of that parasite. So this is the life cycle of Monigia species. In this case, life cycle is indirect. That is, there is involvement of another host, uh, host that is in, uh, which is known as intermediate host for the completion of this life cycle. And the intermediate host for this parasite is olivated mite or forest mite. And the infective stage for this parasite is the cystisarcoid and time required for this for the completion of this uh, life cycle of this parasite is five to six weeks. So the, uh, this parasite uh, located in the small intestine of the final host, in this case it is sheep, goat, cattle or different other ruminants, and the gravid proglotid will be passed through the feces. Whenever the forest mite will intake or ingest the egg of the of this uh, parasite. The development, uh, the cystisarcoid will be developed within one to four months. And this cystisarcoid is the infective stages uh, for the final host. So this final host will be infected after ingesting uh, this forest mite having the cystisarcoid in their body cavity. And after ingestion, this cystisarcoid will be developed and ultimately from this cystisarcoid, a mature parasite will be developed and uh, ultimately they will start producing gravid proglotid. And I have already mentioned that the time required for the completion of this life cycle is five to six weeks. That is from here. So from in the grazing, in the grazing land, there will be mite on the pasture and mite will possess cystisarcoid in their body. And after ingestion, ingestion, this cystisarcoid will be released in the intestine, followed by there will be a mature parasite which will start producing gravid proglotid as well as they will start producing different clinical signs. Here, I would like to discuss some of the important epidemiological features that involves in the occurrence of such diseases. 
So meningiosis or meningi extans or venereal infection mostly occurred in uh, young animals, that is in lambs, kids, calves, and the age range is one to eight months. The incidence is higher in summer month, that is in summer month, the activity of the mite is higher. And the activity of the mite is also higher in the permanent grass or a pasture land which is left uncultivated for a longer period of time. So if an animal grazes on those land, they have the higher chances to be infected with this parasite. And another important uh, interesting features of this parasite, the longevity of the mature parasite in the animal is around uh, six to, uh, two to six months. And after that, they are spont spontaneously eliminated. Pathogenesis or pathogenic significance. In case of the light infection, there is no pathogenic significance. In case of the heavy infection, uh, some pathogenic effect can be found. So how pathogenesis is produced? First of all, you have to think about the location of the parasite. First of all, they are found in the small intestine of the host. So in uh, from the small intestine, they continuously absorb nutrient from the host. As a result, uh, it may lead to malnutrition of the affected host. The next one is when large number of parasites are located in the, in the small intestine, it may occlude or obstruct the intestine. As a result, there may be or it may act as the risk factor for bulbulus or intersusception. What is bulbulus and intersusception? In your pathology classes, uh, you will come to know a lot about this two terminology. And the next thing, when a parasite attaches to the intestinal mucosa, if there is any damage of the intestinal mucosa, it may lead to enteritis followed by ulceration. And if the ulceration doesn't heal, it will ultimately lead to perforation of the intestinal wall, leading to peritonitis and finally death of the animals. So what are the uh, clinical signs involved in this parasitic infection? So in case of the light infection, there is no clinical sign, which is known as asymptomatic infection. And in case of the heavy infection, uh, the major clinical sign involves unthriftiness. So what is unthriftiness? Unthriftiness is you are providing your animal a lot of food, a lot of quality food, but they are unable to put weight. That is called unthriftiness. And weakness, diarrhea, intestinal obstruction are uh, the sign in case of the heavy infection. In some cases, digestive disorder, even death, and respiratory sign convulsion are also recorded. So these are the reference books that I have used to make this presentation. And if you want to know more about this uh, parasite, please read the books. There is no alternative of reading textbooks. Thank you so much for listening this presentation.